In this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up what I call the external vendor scenario using SFTP Gateway version 3. In general, there are two scenarios where you would need an SFTP server. In the first scenario, you need to archive data to S3 and your clients need to use the SFTP protocol. And in the second scenario, you need to securely exchange files with people outside your organization. This video covers the latter, which I'm going to call the external vendor scenario. Let's say you have two external vendors, A and B. You want them to send you files, but they shouldn't see each other's files. Also, you have an internal employee that exchanges files with these vendors. Let's call this the internal manager, and this user needs read-write access to the external vendor's folders. One approach might be to ask the internal manager to SSH into the server, and then use sudo commands to elevate their privileges. But oftentimes, the internal manager is not a sysadmin and needs a more user-friendly interface like FileZilla, which is an SFTP client to manage files. To configure this scenario, I'm going to use the new folder management feature in SFTP Gateway version 3. Folder management lets you point SFTP true directories to different S3 locations. This lets you do things like grant one SFTP user read-write access to everyone else's files. In this demo, I'm going to create some external vendors, and by default, they will be true in the folder users slash username. Then I'm going to create the internal manager and point his true directory to slash users so he can access everyone else's files. Here, I have already deployed SFTP Gateway as a CloudFormation stack. On the Outputs tab, it shows the public IP address of my instance. And here, I have navigated to that public IP, which takes you to the web admin UI for SFTP Gateway. I have already created an admin user and logged in. The first thing I'll do is create a new SFTP user. And this is going to be external vendor A. You can just leave the defaults. To set a password, expand Advanced Options and type in a new password. When finished, click Save. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for External Vendor B. Now we have two SFTP users, external vendor A and external vendor B. Next, click on the folders tab on the top right. You'll see a users folder, which is already created for you. Within the users folder, a true directory is created by default for each SFTP user. So when external vendor A logs in via SFTP, this external vendor A folder becomes their file system root. Next, I'm going to create the internal manager. But instead of generating a default true directory for this user, I'm going to point the internal manager to the user's directory. This will give him access to all the external vendors underneath. So go back to users and create the internal manager user. For the username, I'm using internal manager. And for home directory, this time I'm going to choose select home directory. Click Select Folder, and you'll see a modal window that lets you choose your Chiroot directory. Click on Users, and the selected folder should say Slash Users. Then click Apply. Before you hit Save, don't forget to configure a password for this user. Finally, click Save. To review, we have the internal manager pointing to the slash users folder, and he has read-write access to the users folder and anything nested within. And each external vendor is created with a default folder that is the child of the users folder. Now that all the SFTP users are created, I'm going to test them out using FileZilla. Click the icon at the top left to open the site manager. For the host, I already have the public IP address of the EC2 instance. 
For user, I'm going to type in external vendor A. Type in the password I set earlier. And then click connect. This prompt is for server host key authentication. So click OK. And now I'm logged in. Next, I'm going to upload a test file, user a.txt. And it looks like it uploaded successfully. Next, I'm going to repeat the process for external vendor B. I'm going to log in. and upload a file. Finally, I'm going to log in as the internal manager. Behind the scenes, I'm truded into the user's directory, and I can see the true directory for each external vendor. If I drill down into external vendor A's folder, I see the user a.txt file I uploaded earlier. And the same goes for external vendor B. Let's say that as the internal manager, I want to send a file to external vendor B. Since I have read-write access to everything under the user's directory, I can simply drop a file. Now, all these files are backed by S3. To demonstrate this, I'm going to show you the S3 console. To find the S3 bucket, first go to the CloudFormation Outputs tab and copy the value for the default bucket. Then search for this bucket in the S3 service. Within this bucket, you'll see the Users folder. And here are the two external vendor folders. External vendor A has the user a.txt test file. And external vendor B has both the test file and the internal manager's file. Typically, when the internal manager sends a file, the external vendor will download the file and then delete it. So let's see this in action. Back in FileZilla, I'm going to log in as external vendor B again. You might need to hit refresh in order for the file to show up. Since I have read write access, I should be able to download the file and then delete it. The files you see in SFTB Gateway version 3 are live, which means the delete operation in FileZilla was deleting the actual file from S3. You might need to refresh the page. And it looks like the file was deleted from S3. And that's it for this video. For more information, check out our documentation at help.thorntech.com or email us at support at thorntech.com. Thanks for watching.